everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the symphony. It looks like, oh, we got a few people in chat. Hey, guys, welcome. Thank you for coming to a, what is this, a Thursday afternoon on the East Coast game? Um, sight and sound good. Thank you so much, Doc. We appreciate it. All right, guys, we are here uh, back with the symphony with a new segment of the symphony coaching series that we're trialing out literally with this episode and this is the rpg system roundtable now i'm pretty sure on the other server bucho um carl and i were futzing around and somebody was like you know it'd be a good coaching series if we just i think it was carl actually uh was like you know it'd be cool if we had like a roundtable discussion about systems and we were like yeah what's that look like and then Carl built it, and here we are. So <laughs> we are trialing that out for the first time today. Uh, we chose one of Symphony's favorite systems, uh, one of our favorite games, which is uh, Alien, the RPG published by The Love of My Life, Free League Publishing, um, back in, <laughs> what did I say, 2019 is when this game originally landed. So yeah. we've streamed it a bunch on Symphony. You've heard me on podcasts with it. Um, it's easily one of my favorite settings, one of my favorite games. Um, all three of us run and write content for Alien the RPG. So we were like, you know what? It'd be great. Let's bring us uh, or let's bring ourselves together and have a discussion on this game. So hopefully you can find some good value here. I am going to step out of the way. Um, before I do, just quick introductions. Uh, I do want to mention that Symphony does have a Patreon. So if you like this content and you would like to help us make more of it, Please considering backing us on back bled, bled words. That was hot. Y'all hear that? <laughs> uh, please consider backing us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash symphony entertainment. Okay. So without further ado, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Carl, we're going to start off with you. Tell us who you are, where people can find you, some of the things you do. And we're going to do a surprise question today. And the surprise question is, what is your favorite entity from the alien universe? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> hi everyone. I'm Carl. I you caught me on the uh, the server almost certainly. Um, I'm usually helping out with the assets on the back end of Symphony and getting these things. Uh, also, as, as Bridget pointed out, if this goes wrong, it's my fault. So, because uh, I suggested this idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is kind of what I what I've started to really be into lately is just you know roundtable discussions and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of favorite entity, mm -hmm. I I actually really really like the original Space Jockey. Oh, like because before they started answering questions about it for a good thirty five years, it was what the hell is that? Like what was that? Where where is it? I think the runner up would probably be from the video game Dark Descent, where there's literal human cultists who have chest burster embryos inside oh of them. Oh, God. So th so they can kind of talk to the hive mind. Yeah, it's it's very freaky. <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Sue, hit us, baby. Tell us who you are, what you do, where people can find you and your favorite entity from the alien universe. I'm Sue Savage. I run a whole bunch of different games, mostly horror, but not all. Uh, I've got a few things for sale on Drive Through RPG, including a scenario that I ran here. And uh, my favorite entity. But, well, really, it's the ones I made up myself, which we'll probably yes. talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> So, 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 uh, and guys, I'm Bridget and I'm just going to throw out my favorite entity. Like, listen, I, the classic Xenomorph makes me very happy. It just really does. Just the build on that monster makes me happy. The classic Xenomorph, um, and their entire reproductive cycle just makes me very happy. If I had to lean in with the next one, androids when done well can literally shape the nature of your game. And I have some more opinions about the oversaturation use of, ha ha, surprise Android, uh, and how cliche and boring that can get in storytelling. But we'll jump into that one later. Uh, for now, I am going to hand the round table over to <laughs> Carl. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote out a small itinerary for this, but we're hopefully just going to have a nice discussion about Alien and uh, see where it leads us. So I think my first question for the both of you is how did you first encounter Alien, the the game system? What made you interested in it in the first place? Um, and let's see, uh, Sue, can you lead us off? Well, I, think I first saw it being advertised in the run-up to Dragon Meat, and at that point it didn't really grab me because I, I didn't really know what it was. But uh, 
well, then at my local RPG club, the Milton Keynes RPG, uh, one of our GMs offered it in a short block. It was the Chariot of the Gods scenario. Mm. And uh, I love that GM. He ran a bunch of Coriolis for me before that, so I signed up immediately. Had nice. a wonderful time. Cool. Bridget, how about you? Yeah, uh, I actually kind of have a ser- similar story to Sue. The game was advertised. It was launched. And as much as I love Alien, I was like, I don't want to play a damn Alien RPG. Like, what is Free League doing today? I'm not in the mood. Um, so I avoided it for probably a year, almost maybe two years. I didn't bother with it. Um, well, maybe it was just a year because I played it during the pandemic. It was 2020, I think, or maybe 2021. And um, John Hook ran it as a game for Gen Con Online because we couldn't meet in person. So Gen Con Online was a thing. And I still didn't want to do it. But my friend Jared Smith hit me up. I was like, yo, come join this alien game with me. And I was like, no. He was like, no, come on. Come join this alien game with me. And I was like, I don't want to play aliens. You already know what happens. What am I doing? I get, we get it. It's a face. We get, I don't want to play an alien game. He's like, please. And then I said, I was like, fine. And I ignored all the pre stuff that John Hook sent because it was like a two page thing about dice pools. And I was like, I don't care. And, and it was all the stuff about like, and this is how you handle stress and stunts. And I was like, I don't care. Just get, let me get into the game and get this two and a half hours. Oh, and, I, and then I sat down at the game. I was just like, oh, oh, oh. And then I wound up buying all the shit like the following night. Fair. <laughs> that is entirely fair. So, yeah, I mean, for, for me, Bridget, as you know, it was something that um, popped up on my radar. And I completely ignored it when it first came out. Um, it was one of those, like, I had the exact same reaction that you did, mm-hmm. saying, like, okay, yeah, great. Big bug monster shows up and eats me. Great. Ooh. Something with less interaction than Call of Cthulhu, or at least the popular <laughs> the popular idea of what Call of Cthulhu is. Um, but then I, like, during the middle of the pandemic, I had actually started to hear some really good buzz about it. And you were kind enough to run one of your scenarios for me and, and Dean and a couple of other of our friends. Mm-hmm. And um, that absolutely hooked me on it. I, I I was I was also very like kind of taking that with a light touch, but I'm like, all right, I'll if I can have a pulse rifle, I will sit down for a session <laughs> or two. <laughs> uh, so I did. And and there were a bunch of different things about it that I'm, I'm we're really going to get into later that I really, really ended up loving about the system itself. Um so um so that kind of like related to that like what um what makes the system worth discussing and what can you guys tell us about kind of your the the setting and like what you like about the world of alien oh can we default to sue first on this one too (laughs) (laughs) i i I can go it's it's a it's round table so (laughs) it doesn't have to be same order yeah i reckon the answers we just gave gave us a pretty good idea why it's worth discussing yeah that's fair yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it's, it's a, that... you might not jump onto immediately but the moment you actually try it yeah you're immediately hooked good articulation yep. um yeah I, all right well, well we'll move past that question because that was a really good answer <laughs> that was, yeah like see this, this all you need is sue <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what what about the so moving beyond the game system and, yeah. and that sort of thing, now that we've all had it and and one thing I will highly recommend anybody do is take a look at the very least at the core book because yeah. it is a beautiful encapsulation of 40 years of aliens expanded universe into about 80 pages well said. with lots of pictures. Um so what it, was it about the setting of alien that you guys really liked? Hmm. Okay, so I'll hop in on this one. So I think it's a, a two-part expression on things that I genuinely like. Um, Alien, Aliens were two of like my favorite movies growing up as like you know a young adult kid and whatever. So uh, from a setting standpoint, there's a bit of nostalgia that I really feel anytime I connect with the Alien setting because it's just a horror movie that like even today I will put that on you know every couple months Alien or Aliens and just enjoy. So there's that nostalgia aspect to it. And honestly, now that I'm saying that out loud, I think that's part of the reason why I was so apprehensive about jumping into the game in the first place because I didn't want them to fuck it up. I was yeah. like, I love Alien too much to go play an RPG that they're going to trash and ruin the genre, ruin this. I'm not, so that might have been part of my initial apprehension, my immediate like, ah. So I think there's a nostalgia aspect for it that it just reconnects me to a lot of those uh, fears and tensions and oh my God moments that I loved as a kid. Um, the thing that I'm loving more and more about the setting now 
is how Free League has brought out all of this new content that lets us tell stories in other places uh, from, you know, the perspective of the colonial Marines or from a colonist or even on different planets that haven't been explored. So like, uh, I'm so used to being just on a spaceship and being stuck with a xenomorph. It's nice to see that this world is now expanding. You know, Gaska is helping <laughs> expand this world. Um, so there are more places to play and it, it, it kind of like uh, expands beyond just the alien xenomorph facehugger uh, cannon. And you get to start dealing with like some of the real enemies in the game, which is like Wayland Yutani and humans. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I think that's probably one of my favorite things as well is that if you remove the xenomorph entirely, you could still play a very satisfying, like, hard sci-fi game in that universe yeah. without ever running into an alien. Now, yeah. obviously that's what you're there for eventually. Um, but they even give you advice during, you know, campaign play that if you're going to play this over a long period of time, maybe save the Xenomorph for the end or like start peppering it in a little bit, a uh, little bit throughout it. But, you know, it gets real deadly when they show up. So don't, uh, you know, be careful about when you drop it in. Yeah. So, what about you, Sue? And yeah, what I really liked in the book is I, I learned so much about the alien universe that I didn't already know. Is that I've seen the first two films and then refused to watch anything after that because I was <laughs> advised against it. Probably a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any other tie-in stuff, but I, here it all is with like, stuff about how the the setting is governed and some different companies besides Wayland Yutani, which are have uh, given me some fun ideas for characters in the past nice very nice yeah and so i just i agree there's there's a lot you can do beyond just having a xenomorph on a spaceship yep yep <laughs> so all right so moving on a little bit to sort of the the crunch of the game mm -hmm. um what's the 